Well, it appears now that uh, the series of the questionings uh, continues. Uh, once again, an uh, uh, earthquake, the one we experienced about 15, 20 minutes ago, was a uh, seven point uh, in the Big Bear vicinity. That's the epicenter. Uh, as to uh, what uh, the causes, uh, uh, aftershock of this current seven point, uh, there was another one apparently of six point. So here we've had uh, uh, now two made earthquakes, one with a magnitude of 7.4, now one with a seven point. The big difference here, and the most important part, is that there are two different locations. The first one at uh, 4.58 this morning near Joshua Tree, the second one at 8 o'clock this morning in the vicinity of Big Bear Lake with a magnitude of 7 point. We will continue to stand by here at Caltech to bring you the latest information, of course, and um, I'm Henry Alfaro reporting live. Back to you. Thanks, Henry. Okay, Henry, yeah. thank you very much for those updates. Uh, in fact, then, the suspicious Kate Hutton had uh, earlier proved out yeah, uh, two, two separate earthquakes, earthquakes yeah. on different faults. Okay, I think we have a uh, reporter, Jeff Michael, who is out in the Yucca Valley area, obviously the scene of the most damage. Uh, I think it's near the, uh, nearest the epicenter. Jeff, uh, can you hear us? And what's going on out there? What have you been able to, to, to see? Well, we can sure hear you, and if you can see behind me, this is the ba this is the uh, the landmark of damage here in Yucca Valley. This is the Yucca Bowl, and it has been destroyed here on the north side of the building. This used to be a stucco wall with rebar running through it, and you can see this orange beam up here. This beam, during uh, what we thought was an aftershock, but really is a separate quake, all in. Uh, all to itself was just dancing back and forth. In fact, as our photographer Tim Danson was trying to get a, uh, an inside shot inside of this bowling alley, we hit that aftershock and, uh, and he got out as fast as he could. With me is the owner of the bowling alley. Your name, sir, is? Jerry Gabrogi. Jerry, what do you have? Where were you when this hit? Tell me what you can, uh, what you know. Well, I was in bed sleeping and it just kept rolling and rolling and just wouldn't quit. Uh, we had a magnitude 7.4 earthquake on a fault that either runs north-south or east-west. We can't tell for sure yet. We'll have to do some further research on that. And then several hours later, we had a magnitude 7 earthquake over just south of Big Bear Lake. This is the San Andreas Fault in this region, and you can see that uh, part of our concern is that this latest event is uh, fairly uh, close to the San Andreas Fault if it's not on it. it seems closer than uh, the April one. Now you just said if it's not on it. Is there a possibility this was on the San Andreas? That is a possibility. We do not know the answer to uh, what fault this seven, this latest seven was on uh, at this point. On a different fault. Uh, it's in an extremely complicated part of Southern California, so at this point, without more information, we can't tell you even what fault it's on. And if we don't know what fault it's on, it gives a really hard time saying what's coming next. Tom, instead of being, no, because the San Andreas, that's the least understood section of it in Southern California, of multiple strands, it's conceivable that the second one might have been on a strand of the San Andreas. It is conceivable. It is. What does that trigger under the advisory? Just by getting the 7.4 earlier, just the 7 that close or possibly on the San Andreas, what probability does it trigger to something equally big or larger than By what we set up in our working group plan of two years ago, by which we had uh, issued an advisory after the Joshua Tree earthquake, it triggers nothing. It is farther away than we thought was likely at that time. Obviously, in this situation, we've got to look at it closely, but it means we don't have a pre-programmed answer for you. It's not so close to make us be totally terrified. It's close enough, and especially, you know, following a few hours after an earthquake, what is it, 50 kilometers away, we got to figure out what's going on. The two epicenters were 50, about 30 miles apart. 20 kilometers apart, okay? But they don't appear to be on the same fault. About 20 miles apart. Now. Yeah. What triggered the state alert? Was it the two in combination, or is the second one more troublesome than the first? I think the two in combination. Yeah. I mean, it, when you've got the two in combination, it means we aren't just looking at a simple, a simple seven. <laughs> you know, it's something a lot more complicated when two separate faults are being involved in the system. We don't know how wide an area is being involved in this, and we just don't have enough information yet. And clearly the chances of further activity. We don't have to have the big one. The governor is completely up to date um, as to both the scientific information as well as the damage assessment information uh, that we currently have. Um, we are currently, you know, assessing the situation and, uh, you know, the governor definitely is informed. Now, what we are currently doing is uh, deploying engineering teams 
uh, out into the field so we can verify some of the damage to assessments that we've been getting. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, under these, these conditions, with so much pressure to get damage assessment information, uh, we, we get a lot of it, but sometimes it's important to verify it, that we, that we have an engineering assessment of what's advice, out there. You say, to the extent possible, stay off the freeway system. Does that include Los Angeles? Los Angeles people ought to stay off the freeway system? Well, clearly the, 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 the focus and concern is with the San Bernardino County area. Although I think our, uh, our statement in general is a Sunday. I think, uh, you know, people uh, should rethink um, uh, being in vulnerable places throughout Southern California. You all felt the shaking. We don't know to the extent of, of the damage. For example, uh, we're not sure how uh, scattered the, da the damage may be. It could be that we've had damage even as far west as uh, this area. We, we don't know exactly yet. So for, pro uh, for cautionary reasons, we're uh, basically advising people to the extent that they can, it's a Sunday, uh, to stay off the, the, the uh, freeway and highway system. Is there any possibility of a state of emergency, and if so, would the National Over Guard time. be activated? Certainly, all state resources, uh, and we saw a recent uh, indication of the available resources for disaster, um, are, are certainly uh, available should they be needed? Are they being activated? Yeah, are they on the overtime right now? The, the National Guard is, is not activated at this point. I don't see any need that, uh, to do that. What about local law enforcement? Are they being asked to stay on to half their shift? That's just a good answer. Lo local government, uh, in, local law enforcement, I'm, I'm sure, have activated their you know appropriate procedures. I'm, I'm not going to try to try to you know speculate what what they're doing specifically but in the case of you know San Bernardino County I know that they the sheriff's uh, uh, operations station their emergency operations center is activated and they have people out in the field with all the uh, high-tech military installations out here are they concerned uh, again um, the Federal government also has, you know, damage assessment procedures. I've been in touch with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, they are also uh, basically deploying their engineers uh, to not only help us, but also uh, to look at federal facilities, I'm sure. Could I get Dr. Jones, could you explain that we're using the 50% figure? Is it a 50-50 chance that? We, what we're talking about is earthquakes of this size. It wouldn't really matter where they are tend to have, I mean, they have aftershocks, and we would expect, as we said earlier, that we'd have aftershocks with at least six. We've now had a seven in between. I mean, it doesn't reduce the chance of having six. And it's just to remember that when you've got this big an earthquake, you're going to have a very large aftershock sequence just because of its size. And of course, then the, there's the unknown chance of, of because it's such a confused looking sequence. But the main thing we're trying to get across is that any after earthquake of magnitude 7.4, damaging aftershocks are going to occur and can cause uh, further injury and further damage, and they need to be taken very seriously. And people got to remember that today when they think about what they're going to do. I mean, the message is to have sense. Lucy, you said that it, you talked about this as an aftershock.